Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. What am I saying all this? Because sometimes we want to have a better life. Do you know how many people I know that want to have a better life that have been in this country? Can, can I go there for a little bit? And, um, but they refuse to learn English. And I'm like, but how is that? If we're going to get out of the rubble and, and we're going to get help people, I want to help people. If I came to this country, it's not because I, I didn't love my country. No, it's because I wanted to better my life and I wanted to better someone else's life. And if we're right now in Oaxaca, our desire is that the kids in Oaxaca won't say, take me to the United States. No, that they will know that wherever they are, they can change their world. That you can get out of the rubble. You can get out of the pressure. You, anywhere you go, rubble goes with you. Or you can say, anywhere you go, crap falls. Right? We won, and I believe that God has called us into a place that it's, it's not just a change in just an atmosphere, but changing a child. Can you imagine if we can change a little kid? If I have the time to go talk to, my, to little Lizzie, because that's what I was called. I was so cute. No, I wasn't, but you know. I would tell her, don't listen to anyone who calls you bad names. You continue to love people. God has a plan for your life, and you are brave. Because if grown-ups are able to do this to you, that means they're the cowards. You are the brave one. But we don't, those capsules do not exist. So I believe that God has given us the opportunity to, to send us globally. That our kids won't live under the rubble. They won't live under whatever things they, they have had to go through. I am tired of reading and breaking curses in our families when we're thinking, I, I don't even know what we think that curses are. Have you heard of breaking curses? My husband is not get here, so this is going to be a, a tell them that I preach right. You're going to get candy. Sometimes if we go through something really hard, people call it, you know, maybe you're cursed. I don't know, maybe it's life. Right? Let me give you just an example of a Paul. 2 Corinthians 1 uh, Verse, chapter 1, uh, verses 3 and 11, and you have to go fast with me. It says, be blessed. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort. God of all what? Who comforts us in all of our what? That we may be able to what? Those who are in any trouble. See, we, we are crying out to God, comfort us here. You know, I lost my job, but whatever is your comfort. And our God is so faithful that he will come and he will comfort us. But the comforting is not just for us to keep the comfort. The comfort is so we can go give it back. Where was I? Nobody remembers. Five? Okay, praise Jesus. Who comforts us in all tribulations, that the way we would be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as the suffering of Christ abounds in us, so our consolation also abounds to Christ Jesus. When you and I are suffering for whatever situation, you know what abounds more than suffering? What does it say? It's not a trick question. What does it say? Exactly. It's exactly. But see, the enemy wants us to be focused on 
No, my suffering. You don't understand my suffering. No, it's my suffering. It's painful. But the, but, but, but God is telling us, yes, you are going to suffer a, a lot of things. But when that happens in your life, guess what abounds more? Consolation. Consolation. You know that consolation has a name? His name is Holy Spirit. Or if you are comforter, if you're not, if you for your consolation and salvation in our hope for you, it's steadfast. Because we know that as you are partakers of the suffering, so also you will partake of the consolation. What is it that we only want to partake of some stuff? I, I told the Lord seven years ago, Lord, I want to partake of the good food, the blessings of God. I want to partake of uh, people loving me. I don't want to partake, uh, and, I, and I did my list, in A, a and B. But you know that you don't get to choose. You either choose Jesus, and he comes with everything that is beautiful. Because Jesus would never put us through something suffering. Like right now, the world is suffering. Watch the news today and, and, and hear the stories of the parents crying now. Do you think that pe and people are saying, where is God? God is in the midst of them. But you know why they're not hearing God? Because we're not willing to open our mouths. Because we're not willing to go get wet. I'm not saying everybody's called to go and, and bring relief. But all, all of us have the ca capability of sending some money somewhere. And then you can even send, send a note. And this is because God loves you. His consolation, he hasn't never left you. You know, growing up, I was, I was a very crazy child. I always wanted to be, uh, I always wanted to be in my dad. He, Daddy, don't take him now. He's here. Chapel, I love you. I wanted to be, can somebody adopt? me I was like tell me the truth am I your daughter I think I, I he doesn't remember am I your daughter and sometimes he will play with me no you I'm not your father I'm like, yes I have a chance to go look for my parents do you know why people do that because you are so twisted in your thinking that you never know the goodness that you have you always wish you would have bo been born in a better family, someone who doesn't have any, any problems. Do you know any family that doesn't have any problems? If so, let me know. I want a vacation with them. And if they, if, and if they are taking takers, hey, we come with four and a dog. Think about it. If even Jesus' family, drama. Joseph was about to give her a certificate of divorce, of divorce. Can you imagine? Can you imagine all of the teenagers with their Twitter and, and Snapchat and all that? She's about to be left hanging. And the poor Mary with her veil. Let's pray for Mary. But can you imagine? We really like, oh my gosh, you're... Your entire business is going to be told in town. And they say she was 12 or 13. And I'm like, don't even, I don't even want to go there. But I like, we, we need to change. We need to be that church that fills everything. We are going to go through tribulations. He said it. But we abound even more and more and more and more and more goodness of God. And I'm preaching to myself. Because I, there has been days that this girl is like, uh, I don't want to get out of bed. And I'm just being honest. Should I continue? To be ignorant, uh, he says, we, don't, we do not want you to be ignorant, brothers and sisters, right, of our travel which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure, 
Have you ever been burdened beyond measure? That means that there is no stick in long enough that you can measure how burdened you feel. And above strength, so that we despair even of life. Yes, we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. See, in our suffering, this is, the, this is a, a different type of suffering when you... When you settle it in your heart, you know, I, don't know, I no longer live in, uh, for, for me, but I live in Christ Jesus, who is my strength. And he, in my life, it abides in him. I am hidden in him. And do you know how many times in my life, in my 21 years of life, have said it and said it and said it and said, nope, I, my life does, doesn't belong to me. Nope. Nobody can hurt me. Nobody can do anything because my life is hidden in Christ. And all of a sudden, I'll blow you. It's like, oh, where was I? You even forgot what you were saying. But I believe that we as Christians in the time that we're living, we need to settle it who we are in Jesus Christ. Because disappointment will come. Betrayals will come. Disasters will come. But it says that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead, that even if something happened that you're like, I don't know how this is going to happen, but my God says that he raises the dead. How is this kid alive after three days? And they're hearing, my husband said, they're hearing a little bit miracles of miracle after miracle about little kids that are being pulled out of, like, the rubble. Only God. Only God. And we want you to, I want you today to open your eyes. You know, on Sunday we had an amazing service, and they said, we are seers. We are seers, and we need to see what God has for us. We need to see what's coming before it comes. We need to see how we're going to respond. We need to see what the world needs to hear. We need to see for our families. We need to see. for We're not going to be the, the ones running away. We're going to be the ones running towards what is needed. You're like, Pastor, can we have another message on love? Okay, there you go. A message on love. You know, to me, Paul is like, I love Paul, but I love everybody. All my homies from the Bible. But I, I, I'll go back to verse A where it says, Paul says, For we do not know, we don't want you to be ignorant. For a trouble which come to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure of our strength, so that he despair even of life. Yes, we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. You know what I appreciate about this passage? Is that Paul was very vulnerable. We as Christians, we're like, we think we're doing a, um, we assume that we shouldn't ever experience pressure. We assume as good Christians that um, we should never be dealing with, with uh, depression, oppression, sickness. We feel like we are exempted. Nowhere in the Bible says that we are exempted. And that doesn't mean that Jesus didn't die on the cross. So I'm not taking that from the cross. At the cross of Jesus came to give us life. And we have everything that he gave us. We have an inheritance that we have in Jesus. But you and I have to go for it. You and I have to fight it. You and I have to be like bulldogs and grab it and don't let, let no one steal it from us. But I really believe that we are like, we're almost afraid of, of the pressure. Have you ever, like, I, I used to think that that was very honorable, but I don't anymore. When you meet people and they're like, uh, you, know that they, you know that they're going through something really bad. And you go, well, hi, how are you do, doing, brother? Praise the Lord and God Almighty. We are winning and we are winning. Jesus is the Lord and 
they call you all these things. Brother, I just want to know how you're doing. I don't want you to tell me like three Bible verses. Can you just tell me how you're doing? Well, the Lord is my shepherd. Okay, brother, adios. And there's some other people that they have accustomed themselves. They wear a mask. You know that you can wear a mask in church? They're beautiful ma mask, and they're called strength, faith. People ask you, how you doing? You're always, you're always doing awesome, which is good. We should be doing good, but we all, according to the Bible, we all should be partaking of the suffering of Jesus Christ. We all should be fighting to advance the kingdom of heaven. And so, okay, something is not adding up here. Because they don't want to say it. They don't want to say it. And I'm going to read it. Because my time is up. I wrote this. The odd thing is that there's so many of us that look so good under pressure. Almost like a great performance. They look great. So you never c get comfort. And because you look so strong in your, in, your, in your silent moments, you feel, what the heck is wrong with me? Because no one thinks you're weak. So why would they need to encourage you? Why would they need to go come for you? You, 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 have, you have built this facade that it's like you're helping 20 people at the same time and then going home and dying. Do you know how pressure builds? God doesn't want you to be ruled of pressure inside. I once knew a, a pressure cooker. She was very beautiful. A pressure cooker. And then what she did is she was like, she just little by little, like, just you know, it's just my tea in the pressure. Just don't let not, not too much heat. Do you know that depression is pressure inward? That's what it is. Depression is pressure inward. It's, um, it's not a Christian thing that people should see. So let's, let's we're going to find the liver where to put it. We have to find a place in our body where to stuff it. And do you know that that's killing the body of Christ because we're not running for the promises of God because we are too embarrassed of the issues that we still have in life. And I know that this church has a command and that, that command is that it starts with me, it starts with my husband, it starts with my family, it starts with the leadership, and this is your house, it's, it's with you, do you? Hey, I think God thinks you can do awesome things. I always ask that, I, I always tell that to God, why did you choose us? He says, because you are able. But because we don't believe in ourselves, he has to constantly be uh, reassuring us, believe in me, believe in me. But I, I know that 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 we exist to do great things. And I know that I know that I know that God wants to heal this church. And I know that I know that I know. I'm, you're gonna be, you know a lot of things. That it's okay to deal with things, painful things in your life. And it's time to Go turn off your pressure cooker. And if you don't know how to do it, then you tell you the comforter, the one that never leaves you, I don't know how to turn it off. I'm, I'm busy so you turn it the same heat. And, you, and if you suffer from anger, then you give it to God. Because maybe that's the way you deal with 
your pressure in life. And he says, I don't want you living under pressure. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.